most effective means to satisfy our desires, and we can act in whatever way we judge best to satisfy those desires. Now, I want you to notice one thing here. Strictly speaking, what he says is the right of nature is the liberty that each man hath to use his powers and will himself. He says, for the preservation of his own nature, that is to say, of his own life. Now, strictly speaking, then, strictly speaking, if we take what Hobbes is saying literally here, the right of nature gives us the right to judge and act for ourselves in whatever way we think will best preserve our lives. What's so special about our lives? Well, he's assuming that's our strongest desire. That's what we take to be the most important good. But usually, Hobbes is read as saying the right of nature gives us a right to judge and act of regarding any of our hands, anything that we have a desire for, not simply the preservation of our own. So strictly speaking, what he actually says here is somewhat more limited right of nature. That is, we can judge and act for ourselves how to accomplish this important end. But usually he's interpreted as having an even broader right of nature, that we can judge and act for ourselves how to achieve any of our ends, anything that we take to be good. And I actually think that's probably the right rate broader interpretation. Yeah. I mean, it's going to conceivably anything be considered to be conducive to preserving your own attitude exist. I mean, even happiness might be conducive to living longer or something like that. Maybe, maybe. Um, but it, I'm not sure why there's any special reason in his account to single out that, except for the fact that he's assuming it to be the strongest. But it's not really different. It's not really different in the source of its value than any other good, anything else that we desire. OK. Um, notice then, so good, so that's our right of nature. Notice that everybody has it. It's unlimited. It's an unlimited right for each person to judge for themselves and act on the basis of that judgment concerning what's valuable, the satisfaction of their own. You just have the right to exercise your power to the fullest extent, and beyond that, other people's rights are going to override yours. They're not going to override. They may conflict, but you still have that right. Maybe I didn't understand your question. You're saying your rights would extend as far as your power allows them to. Um, beyond that. Yeah, I mean you. You say you have the right, but you don't have the power to take it. That's right. So you can you can judge anything to be good without anybody else telling you that you're wrong. And your ability to accomplish that obviously is going to be limited. So in that sense, your ability to act on your right is limited. OK, um, so uh, we were just talking a moment ago about property rights. So doesn't the right of nature give us property rights? Because property rights are based on having exclusive control. Right, right. right. Then this is, doesn't give us any exclusive rights at all. On the contrary, the fact that everybody has this means that they're going to conf conflict with one another very, very sharply. Okay. Um, he mentioned here, uh, I skipped over it, the right of nature is the liberty that each man has to use his own power. Next, he gives us the definition of liberty. This is the absence of external impediments here. Um, so, on his, the second paragraph. So, his, on his account of liberty, I want you to note two things. One is that our liberty is not constrained by any kind of internal factors. So as long as there's nothing outside of us 
preventing us from doing something, we're at liberty to do that. Second point, notice it doesn't matter what it is outside of us that's constraining us. If there is something outside of us constraining us, then our liberty is limited. In particular, it doesn't matter whether the external constraint is a natural or physical constraint, you might say, or a person. Either one, if it limits our ability to do what we want, constraints are not. So, um, if I'm, um, if I'm walking uh, down the street and I twist my ankle and I'm unable to walk, that's a limitation on my liberty. If I'm walking down the street and you come by and you smash my ankle with a pipe, that's a limitation on my liberty also. No difference conceptually between those two. Okay, and now we come in paragraph three here to uh, his definition of a law of nature. Now, I want to emphasize this. This is his definition of a law of nature. What a law of nature is. We're not talking about the content of specific laws of nature yet. This is like conceptual analysis of this idea. And what he says is this. He says, a law of nature is a precept or general rule found by reason. A rule found by reason. That is, it's a rule found by each one of us reasoning properly. It's not something that's imposed on us externally. It's not something that's imposed on us from the outside. By which a man is forbidden to do that which is destructive of his life, or, take, or taketh away the means of preserving the same, and to omit that by which he thinks it may best be preserved. Um, so, like with the right of nature, the focus here is on preserving our lives. But usually this also is read more expansively. So what a law, so what a law of nature is telling us is how to go about, well, preserving our life or satisfying our other important desires. And this how to go about doing it is not something that someone else is telling us. It's not an external constraint on us. It's not passed by Congress and signed by the President or something like that. This is just telling us, uh, maybe a way to put it this way is, it's telling us how rationally to use our right of nature. <laughs> Our right of nature tells us that we can do anything that we judge best to preserve ourselves and satisfy our most important desires. A law of nature is going to tell us how rationally to do that. So I want to say one more time, this is not something that's externally imposed on us. It's, it's our discovery of the means by which to achieve our most important ends. So, uh, this is an here's an example of a law of nature, a little notice law of nature that Hobbes doesn't mention. Here it is, right? You should look both ways before crossing the street. Okay. So that's something that we can discover using our own reason to tell us how best to go about achieving our most important ends and not getting hit by the car when we go across the street. Not because Congress passed a law telling us not to do this. It's just, it, it, it's not like we chafe under this external constraint and wish that we could do, no. This is telling us how to go about satisfying our most important, the things that we ourselves take to be good. Yeah. Is that imposed on us with drivers, though? Yeah, so there are cars in the state of nature, I grant you that. Okay. But the point is that, this is something that we can discover for ourselves concerning how. Like minus cars, like tires will eat you. 
Is it I'm rationally understanding that a tiger will eat me, so I shouldn't go near it? Right. Or is it right? No, exactly right. This and they'll eat me. So no, it's a rule, maybe a rule of thumb for how best to survive, how best to satisfy your most important desires. So another good one is if you see a tiger licking its lips, run or maybe hide. Yeah, this, this, these are the kinds of things that count as a law of nature. Okay, so we're about to talk about the contents that he talks about. Right? Those aren't his examples. And we're going to be interested in what he thinks the most important laws of nature are. That is the most important rules or strategies or means that we can figure out for ourselves concerning how best to preserve our own lives. Uh, what's the answer going to be? We've been talking about this. What's the most important thing that we can do to preserve our own lives? Form a common law. That's going, be, that's going to be further down the line. That's going to be the answer. But immediately, I mean, I've said this, I've said this you know, half a dozen times already today. The state of nature is bad for each of us. So. The most important law of nature is going to be get out of the state of nature. So we'll see that next time. Um, papers. Uh, the syllabus says that papers are due. Um, um, when did it say? Twenty-third. So that uh, is a week from Monday. I'm going to push it back to that Friday. So papers are due two weeks from today, the 27th. I'll make the change on the syllabus that I put up on Blackboard. So it's two weeks from today. Part of your assignment, I remind you, is to come up with a good topic. That takes work. So I'm telling you, this weekend, you need to spend some time reading in the secondary literature. It's not just one article. Don't take some time. Some of them will be incomprehensible to you. Some of them will be uninteresting to you. Some of them um, eventually will be something that you can work on paper from. So you need to plan to spend some time using JSTOR or uh, Lossless Index. Uh, and this weekend is when you should do this. Next week, you should be emailing me secondary literature that you're interested in and paper topics. Get started. Okay. Um, so, oh, sorry. Uh, last thing. Uh, so you should read through the end of chapter 16 for Monday. That's through page 105. That's the end of part one.